So here we see the anterior view of the abdomen. And here I've cut through all the muscles of the abdomen in order to see them all. The most external muscle of the abdomen is the external oblique muscle. Then there's the internal oblique muscle. And then there's the transverse oblique muscle. These three muscles are a part of the lateral abdominal muscles, or the lateral group. So the muscles of the abdomen are organized into three groups, and these are the lateral group. Then we have the rectus abdominis, and a tiny muscle called the pyramidalis. These two are considered the anterior group of muscles. And then the posterior group has only one muscle, which is this one, called the quadratus lumborum. So these are the muscles we're going to focus on in this video. All the muscles of the abdomen cooperate in their function. They cooperate in flexing your abdomen, rotating it from one side to the other, and so on. All of them also cooperate with the diaphragm during breathing, and they do that by regulating the intra-abdominal pressure by either squeezing your abdomen to push the air out, or releasing the pressure off from your abdomen to allow the diaphragm to expand the volume of the thoracic cavity to push air into the lungs. Now, let's do the posterior group, then we'll do the anterior group, and then end with the lateral group. So the quadratus lumborum, again, is situated on the posterior abdominal wall, as you see here. It originates from the iliac crest and the iliolumbral ligaments, and it inserts at the 12th rib, as well as the coastal process of L1 to L4. And its function is either extension of the trunk during bilateral contraction, or lateral friction of the trunk if only one side contracts. So that was this one. Now the anterior group consists of two muscles. The first one is a tiny muscle located here, down here, this tiny muscle. It originates from the superior pubic ramus and inserts at the linea alba, which are fibers in the midline. And its function is really just to tense the linea alba and strengthen the rectus sheath, which are tendons of the lateral group of muscles. So it helps to tense the tendons of the lateral abdominal muscles. The other anterior muscle of the abdomen is the rectus abdominis, as you see here. This one is going to originate from the xiphoid process and the coastal cartilage of the 5th to 7th rib, and then is going to insert at the body of the pubis between the pubic symphysis and the pubic tubercle, as you see here. Its function is to ventrally flex the trunk, and it also increases the intra-abdominal pressure to push the diaphragm up and aid with expiration. So that's these. Then the last group is the lateral group of the abdomen. The first one is the transverse abdominal muscle. The transverse abdominal muscle is going to originate from a couple of structures located on the lateral and the posterior region of the body. So it's going to originate from the inguinal ligament and the iliac crest, as you see here. It's also going to originate from the thoracolumbar fascia which is a fascia on the lumbar region, as you see here, and it's also going to originate from the 7th to the 12th rib. And then its tendons is going to insert at the linea alba. So its function is to rotate the trunk and also increase the intra-abdominal pressure to aid with expiration. Notice that the rectus abdominis runs through the transverse abdominal muscle. That means that the upper part of the transverse abdominis lie behind the rectus muscle, and its lower part lies in front of the rectus abdominis. So that was this one. Then we have the internal oblique muscle, which is here. It originates from the inguinal ligaments and the iliac crest, as well as from the thoracolumbar fascia as well. And then it's going to insert at the 10th to 12th rib, as you see here, as well as the linea alba. And its function is ventral flexion of the trunk, if both sides contract, or tilt the trunk to the side if only one side contracts. It's also going to adjust the intra-abdominal pressure and aid with expiration by pushing your diaphragm upwards. Now, the internal oblique and the transverse abdominal muscles are a little special in that they're both going to fuse at the very bottom of the abdomen and form a muscle called the cremaster muscle, uh, specifically in male, because this muscle is going to surround the spermatic cord and the scrotum, as you see here. And this is actually the main reason why the testes are able to regulate its temperature. Whenever it's cold outside, the cremaster muscle will contract and pull the testes towards the body to maintain its temperature. And when it's warm outside, well, then they will relax since they don't need the body temperature anymore. So that's these ones. The last muscle is the external oblique muscle. It originates from the 5th to the 12th rib. So back here, 5th to the 12th rib. 
and they insert at linea alba as well as the iliac crest and its function is bilateral contraction will cause ventral flexion of the trunk and unilateral contraction will tilt the trunk to the side so that was all the muscles of the abdomen